we're going to start off making two really simple, easy patterns using the pattern making tool in Adobe Illustrator. So let's start off using the using the ellipse tool. And you can really make this any size that you want. I'm going to turn the stroke off and change this to a different color. We'll go with the green since the Pantone color of the year is greenery. So with this ellipse selected, and if it's not already selected, you can either use V on your keyboard or use the selection tool on the top of your left toolbar. So with it selected, go to Object, Pattern, and then Make. This will pop up when you are using the pattern making tool. If you do not want to see it again, just click Don't Show Again and hit OK. So as you will see, it automatically will start by repeating them. You can change the number of copies you want at the bottom next to copies. Most of the time I will do a larger so I can zoom out using command and the minus sign to get a better feel for the pattern. And I also am going to unselect the dim copies because I like to see the full pattern. I'm gonna go in and put space between these by using the width and height section and the pattern options. If you want to make sure that the space is equal, make sure to click on the maintain width and height proportions. So you can either type in a number that you would like to use. You can use your arrow keys on your keyboard. I tend to use my mouse and just roll up until I until I get an amount that I like. So another option when you use the pattern making tool next to tile type, and this is something I use all the time, you can do brick by row or brick by column. So that way you have a what is called a half drop repeat. And as you can see now they have shifted and they are no longer in line with one another. You have every other line is half over. Brick by column will do the same thing except for instead of doing the rows, it's going to move the columns. And you also have the option of hex by column and hex by row. I don't really use those a lot. I know some people do, but in this tutorial, I'm not going to go over those. So when you are done making your polka dotted pattern, click save a copy and hit OK. Once again, this is another one that will pop up when you're using it for the first time. If you do not want to see it, just hit don't show again and OK. And then done. At this point, you can delete the ellipse and I'm going to use the rectangle tool or M on my keyboard. I'm going to click once and I already know that my artboard is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So I'm just going to make a rectangle that exact size and hit OK. And to align this with the artboard, I'm going to use my align panel. Um, you can see it either at the top, at the side if you have it open. If you do not see it, go to Window, Align. And you will see this drop down menu. Select it and click Show Options. And then Align to another drop down. Select Align to Artboard if it is not already selected. And then Align horizontally and align vertically. You will see that your pattern you created is in your swatches. 
If you do not see swatches, go to Window and Swatches. If you click on it, it will fill the area that you selected. And I'm going to scale this down. So go to Transform, Scale. Unselect Transform Objects and then click Preview and decrease or increase the size if you want to do that until it's the size that you would like. And that is pattern one. For pattern two, I'm going to use the rectangle tool again and select a color, doesn't matter what color. And with it selected, go to object, pattern, make this time I'm going to unselect the maintain width and height proportion because I only want to change the width so we're making a striped pattern and I just want to go in make a width about the same size as the rectangle and if you'd like to get a better idea of what the pattern would look like, go to copies. I'm going to go nine by nine. So once again, save a copy. And click done. I'm going to delete the stripe. And then using the same rectangle as I did with the polka dotted pattern, I'm just going to select it and then click on the stripe pattern. This time I am going to scale it up so it's not so small and hard to see. Click OK. And one thing that I like to do with striped patterns is I like to rotate them. So go to transform and rotate. And you can really do whatever angle you would like, but most of the time I will do a 45 degree angle click preview and OK and you have created two very simple patterns with the pattern making tool and Illustrator. Now that we have created two very simple patterns I'm going to show you two more ways that I use the pattern making tool on an almost daily basis. So first I'm going to go to this half drop repeat that I created. Um, if you would like to make a half drop repeat, I will leave a link to my Skillshare class below. It goes way more in depth than I can do in this video. I will in the future add another class on YouTube for making a half drop repeat. But the very quick basic way of explaining a half drop repeat is Anything that overlaps on one side needs to show on the other side. And with the half drop repeat, you need to go over and then down by half of the size of the artboard. So if this was a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, this would need to come over a thousand and then drop down by 500. But once again, I go way more in depth and explain it a lot better in the Skillshare class. And in the future, I will also have another video on YouTube for creating a half drop repeat. So once you have your half drop repeat already assembled, I'm going to use the rectangle tool or M on your keyboard and using the width and height of the artboard, which mine is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels click OK. Make sure to turn off your fill and stroke. I'm going to align these horizontally and vertically using your selection tool or V on your keyboard. Select everything and I'm going to create a clipping mask. The keyboard shortcut is Command 7. You could have also used right click make clipping mask 
The reason I do this before using the pattern tool is so that you won't get anything overlapping kind of funky. I've noticed sometimes if I have used it without doing that, it can get a little messy and it doesn't repeat the exact way that I would like it to. So with this selected, go to pattern, make, and then go to your grid and go brick by column. And you will see that these are overlapping the way that I would like and everything is repeating correctly. If you would like a better look at it, you can just zoom out hitting command and the minus sign. And you can always change your copies to like seven by seven. And that way you get a good look at your pattern and see if there's anything that you would like to change. And save a copy. And I always like to test it out by making a rectangle and then selecting the pattern. And you can play around with the scale if you'd like. And I always like to release the clipping mask before saving my file. For the very last thing with the pattern tool, I'm going to just use some clip art that I made in the fall. And you can arrange your clip art or designs any way that you would like. And with the selection tool, I'm going to select the three of these and go to object, pattern, and make. So when you're using just clip art, it's fun to go in and just kind of play around with the settings until you get something that you really love. Um, another thing I will, I didn't explain before, but if you use your overlapping tools here at the bottom, say you wanted to overlap them, you can come in and change the height and overlap. If you wanted the bottom on top, you can change bottom to top or left and front, etc. And I actually kind of like them overlapping. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to change the width a little bit. And I don't really like how there's just this hole there. So I'm going to try to do the brick by column and play around once again with the width and height. And another thing, so I've been doing half drop repeats. So it is literally half of the artboard down or half of the design down. You can go into the brick offset and say you want to do three quarters. You can really change up the design by going in and doing all of doing different amounts. And I'm going to go back to that three quarters because I liked it. And then just save your copy. And for this, I'm just going to make a little square or rectangle and fill with the pattern. And with it selected, like say if you wanted to change the background because there is no background with this, I'm just going to hit Command C and then Command B. So it copied the exact square or rectangle and it pasted it behind and you can't tell that anything is behind there because it is the same exact pattern as the top one but for this I'm just going to select just a random color and you'll see that it has changed that back rectangle into just a solid filled color so I hope you enjoyed the class. Please let me know if there's anything that you would like to learn in Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. Hit subscribe if you like these videos and please feel free to follow me on any of my social media. Links are below.